Point three, part two of CQ one, M one C one and three. We have two questions for this part. The first one, in a Java application, is it possible that you can change the dependency of a service class, but you do not need to change the code of the service class? Yeah. Answer is yes. Yeah. Here, in our module one, so we spend a lot of time to talk about how do we do this yeah. change the dependency of the service class yeah. we change from tight coupling to loose coupling yeah. and next the critical step in order to make the container to prepare dependency object so we use two possible injection data uh, dependency injection method setter in injection setter type injection and a constructor type in injection yeah so both we can do yeah but the setter way we can do in de dependency injection multiple times yeah constructor type injection we can only do when we call the constructor yeah. after the object is created then we do not have another chance to do the dependency injection yeah all right <clears throat> yeah but in that way here another part is we do not need to change the code of the service class when we change the dependency object so we want to change dependency object yeah. in our example we change from uh, html uh, implementation class implementation class to uh, PDF implementation class. Yeah. All right. When you do that change, you do not need to do anything in the service class. Why? Because the container does the change. The container does the change. Then the container calls some appropriate setter or constructor <coughs> to make the final change yeah. so then the container part of change we move another step that change we can use the configuration way When we use configuration way, we can even avoid Java code change. So we change some configuration file content. Yeah. Right? Yeah. After we change the configuration file content, we do not need to recompile the project, but we need to restart the server, reload the application. Okay? Yeah. So here the point no need <coughs> no need <coughs> to recompile the project yeah need to restart the server and reload the web application okay yeah 
Otherwise, your older configuration content is used. Only when you restart, reload, yeah, reload, then yeah, probably this restart, you know, yeah, could be you know unnecessary if you have way to reload, right? Yeah. Sometimes we do not need to restart the server, but we can still reload web application, right? Yeah. So for some server, you have some special control panel, <coughs> web interface. <coughs> now, so after you modify some configuration content, <coughs> you do not stop the server and restart. <coughs> you just reload that web application. Then, in that way, it is much easier. Yeah. But when you restart, all the web applications automatically reloaded. <clears throat> when you restart, <clears throat> all web apps are automatically reloaded. <clears throat> All right, <clears throat> so that's the background for this question. Yeah. All right, <clears throat> next question. <clears throat> in a Java class, if a Java class is in class path of a Java application, then the class object, capital, the class object of this class is automatically loaded into the JVM when the application is executed. Yeah. Here <clears throat> you may need more background. Yeah, for this. Yeah, because first thing is <clears throat> you may not be familiar with this class object for each <clears throat> Java class. For each Java class, <coughs> there is an object. Object, right? Yeah, we know that. <coughs> but that is for instance. Instances, yeah, object. So you can have many, right? Instance usually from one <coughs> class, we can have many instance objects. But for that capital class, yeah, for that class object, for each Java class, only one, only one class object is loaded into the JVM for each Java class used in your application. <coughs> yeah, so they are different. They are closely related, <coughs> but <coughs> these two concepts are different. All right. If a Java class is in the class path, class path, we, we know there is a class path concept in Java. Okay. Then JVM can find your class. Only when it is in the class path, JVM can find it. Yeah. All right. Then the class object of this class automatically loaded. <laughs> the question automatically loaded. This is wrong. So this automatically loaded is wrong. Why? Why automatically loaded is wrong? Yeah. First, you can imagine in your class path, in your Java class path, you may have, have large number of Java classes there. Do you want to load automatically load all those Java classes? Because most of the Java classes you do not need to use in your web application. Probably you only need to use 1% of the Java classes while you need to load all 100%. 
That's not efficient. So you use a lot of memory resource. A lot of memory resources are wasted. So you should not do automatic. The, the problem is automatic. Yeah. Then, if it's not automatic, only when you need to use that particular Java class, then you load. Otherwise, you do not load. Okay? Yeah. All right. So then, when the application is executed, only those Java classes, remember import, you have import line, right? Only the Java classes that are used in your web application are loaded into memory by the JVM. Yeah. All right. So you can see here the problem is here automatically loaded yeah all right so let us uh complete this part